We will come to order now. First of all, I'd like to say good morning to everybody. Today is February the 26th, 2023, Bible study guide number 13. Today's titles, Spiritual Disciplines for New Life. Spiritual Disciplines for New Life. The background scripture come from Colossians chapter 4, verses 2 through 17. The printed text is Colossians chapter 4, verses 2 through 6. And this morning, our devotional reading will come from 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 19 through 27. At this time, I would like for everyone to join me in a verse of song. Until I die, until I die, I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord until I die. I'm going to stay on the battlefield. I'm going to stay on the battlefield. I'm going to stay on the battlefield until I die, until I die. I'm going to stay on the battlefield. I'm going to stay on the battlefield. I'm going to stay on the battlefield until I die. Good morning. This morning we'll be from 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 19 through 27. For though I be free from all men, Yet have I made myself servant to all, that I might gain thee more. And to the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might gain the Jews. To them that are under the law, as under the law that I might gain. Them that are under the law, to them that are without law, as without law. Being not without law to God, but under the law of Christ, that I might gain them that are without law. To the weak became, to the weak became I as the weak, that I may gain the weak. I am made of all things to all men, that I might be all means saved some. And this I do for the gospel's sake, that I might be partaker thereof with you. Know ye that know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receive the prize, so run that ye may obtain. And every man that strives for the mystery is temper, temperated in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruption crown, but we in an incorruptible uh, therefore, so I run not as uncertainly, so I fight, so fight I not as one that beats the air. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I may should be a castaway. I read you from 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 19 through 27. Thank you. Let us pray. This morning, Father, we come to you with thanksgiving in our heart. We thank you, Father, for just waking us up this morning. We thank you, Father, for touching us with that finger of love. Thank you, Father, for our health and our strength. First of all, Father, we want to thank you for your darling son, Jesus, that died on the cross for all our sins. We thank you, Father, for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. Father God, we pray that you just continue to protect us right now. Father, every time we look up, somebody's even getting shot, killed, stabbed. It's so much corruption going on right now father we need your protection in each and every day of our life we pray for our members this morning father we pray that you touch them this morning to come out here a word from you we pray for our sick and our shut in we pray for our bereaved family we pray that you bless our services this morning from the sunday school throughout the morning service bless reverend connors as he bring us the word today it's everyone that's bow with me in prayer these blessings will be asked in your darling son in jesus name we pray amen 
Let your light shine, shine, shine. Let your light shine, shine, shine. It may be someone lost in the valley, trying to get home, trying to get home. Let your light shine, shine, shine. Let your light shine, shine, shine. It may be someone lost in the valley, trying to get home, trying to get home. I would like to thank everyone for participating in our opening services this morning. And at this time, we will turn it over to Reverend Connors for our Sunday school lesson. Praise the Lord, everyone. How is everyone this morning? Truly, indeed, it is a blessing to be in the Lord's house this morning, just giving praise and thanks to our Lord and Savior for allowing us to be here today. And so this morning we have, this morning we have a wonderful lesson in store, talking about spiritual disciplines for new life spiritual disciplines for new life. And this morning our Bible uh, lesson with back, background is coming from Colossians chapter 4 verses 2 through 17. Our printed text coming from Colossians chapter 4 verses 2 through 6. And our devotional reading came from 1 Corinthians chapter 9 verses 19 through 27. And so our aim for change this morning tells us that we will recognize the importance of spiritual disciplines in maintaining a Christian life, reflect on people in our lives who mentor us in faith, and accept the role of mentor for new Christians we may encounter. And so this morning I keep in mind says that, and say to Archippus, take heed to the ministry which thou hast received in the Lord, that thou fulfill it Colossians 4 and 17. And so a background tells us that the Gnostics did not believe in the incarnation, the act of Christ taking on human flesh. Thus, they denied his humanity. In addition, they also preached against the supremacy of Christ and his role in creation. They were proponents of human logic and philosophy. And so Paul sought to counter this by explaining redemption, clarifying Christ's identity, lunging a polemic uh, against the Gnostic philosophy, and describing ways to put our beliefs about the death and resurrection of Christ into what? Practice. And so this morning, as we get started this lesson talking about spiritual disciplines, um, for the new life, spiritual disciplines for new life. I want to ask you a question this morning as we start out. How should a Christian pray? How should we pray? What you think about that, Sister Ghost? How should we pray? We should pray daily, uh, and we should pray uh, in sincerity. Because hmm. God knows everything, and he knows when we are just saying words and when we are actually praying. Uh, when you pray, as uh, Pastor Mabry often say, it's not a monologue, it's a dialogue. Mm -hmm. We talk to God, and then we listen, and then God talks to us. Amen. Okay. Thank you. Let me ask you another question then. Yes. Why should Christians pray for their mentors? We should pray for <laughs> our mentors, which is our, whoever's in charge of us. We should pray for them that God will uh, give them a word uh, and that they are saved. So when God gives them a word, they can give it to us and us being uh, Christians to receive the word from them. Amen. We pray for them. 
Yeah. Okay. I pray for you every night, Brother Donald. <laughs> Thank you, man. You sure need to. <laughs> we, all, we, all, we all need prayer. Amen. Amen. You had something to say? Yes, and to go along with what Sister Gospel said, we should pray for our mentors because, especially those in pastoral leadership, they're carrying a lot. Not just themselves, but they're watchmen over our souls as well. So. Mm -hmm. I think people get so caught up in they're the pastor and they're not going to do this, that, and the other that they tend to forget that our leaders are just as human as we are. They're still flesh on this earth. So praying for them, you know, that's, we need to pray for them because we don't know what they're going through. Amen. Mm -hmm. And see, we have to understand, you know, hey, human just like you human. That's right. We face things just like you face things. You know, everybody deals with different things in life. Some people can deal with the same thing in life, but we react to it differently, you know. And so our Christian walk is a Christian walk of a whole lot of prayer. A whole lot of prayer. Because <laughs> we need to pray. And so when we look at this lesson, this one it says continue in prayer. Colossians 4, verses 2 through 4. And get someone to read that for me. Well, before that, uh, most, uh, Brother Connor, uh, when I was reading that uh, in focus story, that tells us a whole lot. When she was praying daily and listening to God, uh, life was pretty good. But once she got caught up in worldly things and didn't have time for it, mm -hmm. you know, that's what happened to us. <laughs> Amen. Hey, um, it said, continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. Well, they're praying also for us that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak to the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in bonds, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. Continue in prayer. Today's lesson text, it begins in the middle of Paul explaining how Christians should practice their faith. In chapter 3, he exhorts believers to make sure their lives reflect Christ and to not focus on what? Earthly things, but instead the things God, the things of God, because they have a new life in Christ. He encourages them to put aside the various sins of their old selves and embrace holiness as defined uh, in chapter 3, verses 12 through 14. And so Colossians chapter 4 and 2 focuses on what? Prayer and attitude. There are three things Paul wishes the church of Colossae, Colossae uh, would understand and apply to their lives. First, first, he says, a Christian must be devoted to what? Prayer. Prayer is simply a direct conversation with God and should be of primary importance in a believer's life. Prayer. But now get this. Authentic prayer, sure enough real prayer, is never one-sided because it is a vital way in which God communicates directly to us. Questions are answered and guidance is given through the usage of Christian prayer. Now that's first. It ain't one-sided communication. So like Sister Gold said, it's not a monologue, it's a dialogue. And so secondly, he says to watch. To watch. And this must be accompanied with prayer. So one should always avoid unfocused, lack, lackadaisical prayer in which the individual or group treats it, treats it as a mere what? 
religious routine. That is why when we come to church, Brother Paul, we have to be very careful that we just don't get into this religious routine. See, COVID brought a lot of bad things. Yes, it did. But it also brought some good things. Because for some churches, it shortened up our services, now didn't it? You had to get straight to the nitty gritty. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> you know, we're going to open up service. We're going to do prayer. We're going to do offering. Take it up. We're done. We move on. We're going to get straight into the word. Cut down on a whole lot of songs, cut down on a whole lot of announcements, cut down on a whole lot of stuff. Just get straight to the word. Prayer. It shouldn't be unfocused. Your prayer should be focused. Your prayer should not be lackadaisical. lackadaisical. You should have a purpose with your prayer. Because it tells us prayer must be what? Intentional, focusing on what we are thinking and saying always, and, and, and saying always alert for an answer. Lastly, we must have intentionally focused prayer with a spirit of what? Thanksgiving. Our attitude, attitude should be one of what? Gratitude, humility, and reverence toward God. Conversely, prayer should not be done with what? Uh-oh, entitlement, arrogance, and pride. <laughs> you should be humble and you should be thankful. Because at the end of the day, I done told my kids before, you ain't entitled to nothing. <laughs> you get it because I love you, but guess what? If I don't want to get it, I ain't got to get it. So don't go thinking just because, well, I'm your son, I'm your daughter, you supposed to, I ain't supposed to do nothing. And when you get to a certain age, guess what's going to happen? My wife, look, my wife, no, D. McKenzie, I'm cutting the cord. Look, you better swim. <laughs> when I learned how to swim, I was just thrown in the pool. You gonna swim or you gonna sink? You got two choices. I swim. <laughs> and that's the way life hits us a lot of times. But when it comes to prayer, your prayer needs to be focused. Your prayer needs to be intentional. But lastly, you ain't entitled to nothing. So don't go in your prayer thinking, well, God gonna do it because you know he's supposed to and I'm missing, no, 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 no. You ain't entitled. You shouldn't be so arrogant and you shouldn't be prideful. And so in Colossians 4 and 3, the Apostle Paul displays a, a concreted faith, not only in God, but in the transfer, transformative power of the gospel message. He continues with the theme of prayer, asking the church of Colossae to lift him and his group up in what? Prayer so that God would open unto us a door. Now this door that he's saying open, is a metaphor for what? Opportunities to witness. And I think Sister Gosen hit on that a little early. We see here that even the mentors in faith need what? Prayers of their charges of their subject, of those that are under them, or those that are leading them, to help strengthen them in their mission. Now, Brother Paul, I'm just an assistant, associate. I'm fine. I'm good. Do I help, Pastor? Yes, I do. But sometimes I'm just going to be real. I ain't none of Pastor. I can say this. Now, some of these folks, I be the one put some knots upside their head. I'm just keeping it real. <laughs> yeah, look, now nah, look, this go. So, yep, I ain't supposed to say that. <laughs> but when you look at folks, and see what I'm getting at is this. Listen to me. When you look at 
how people treat their leader. Whoo, Deep McKenzie do something to you. And then you sitting there and you be thinking, Lord, I'm glad that ain't me. Ooh, I don't see how pastor do it. Man, I don't see how he take that. Man, I don't see how he can just keep his cool and just. But his mentorship teaches me, well, this is how I have to be too. Because who knows, one day it might be me. But before that, it's me right now. Because I still have to uphold what I see my mentor uphold. But what goes through my mind <laughs> is, boy, ooh. <laughs> and that is why Susan goes and look, I got to pray. <laughs> and thank the Lord, you pray for me too. Because now think about it, Susan goes, like you said, what happens if we take the veil of prayer away? See what happens then? It'll be an all out Western going on up in here. So, in a strange twist of encouragement, Paul states that because of his imprisonment, Paul's sitting in prison now, most of the fellow believers in Christ have, have far more courage to speak the word of God without fear. This was a powerful statement, especially considering the fear that many Christians have in proclaiming the gospel. Our lives are powerful witnesses to what? Everybody. A faith that isn't worth the sacrifice of one's life isn't worth following. Paul sitting in jail, why? Because of his faith, because of what he was preaching. When the Apostle Paul risks freedom and his life for the sake of the gospel, everyone took notice and was encouraged to do what? To do the same. When I see my pastor, my mentor, my leader do the things that he does, it encourages me, Sister goes to do the same. Even though another side of me wants to say, mm-mm, Mm-mm. But so let's go. I see my leader doing it. So that encourages me. Well, if he can do it, I can do it too. Is it hard for him? I'm sure it was at some point in time. But he's just gotten a little bit more seasoned over the years until he's able to deal with things a little bit better. And that encourages me to know that, hey, if he can get to that point, I can too. Why? Because we all chasing after what? Jesus as our model. Jesus is our ultimate mentor. If Jesus could go up on the cross with a, with, a thorn, with a crown of thorns stuck on his head, nails in his hand, nails in his feet, and he can say, not thine will, but your will be done, Father. Now, why can't we go through and deal with the little things we got to deal with? And so, we talking about what? Continue in what? Prayer. Prayer is important, saints. Prayer is important. Got another question for you. This is a good one. Describe the speech of a Christian. How should a Christian talk? Salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. That's what the words say. That's what the words say. That's sure what the words say. I'm glad you spoke the words, Sister Go. Because that's sure like how some of them talk. <laughs> See, that's sure like how some of us Christians talk now, is it? Some Christians, you can't tell if. If it's the worldly folk talking to the Christians, I mean, you can't tell the difference. And you know, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Reverend Connor, uh, when you read these uh, words, you get in these blessings, you read your Bible, 
and you think a thing that you have done, and it might have been out of not knowing, you know, but once you know, it mm -hmm. condemns you, mm -hmm. and it makes you want to do better and act better. Mm -hmm. And I thank God every day that uh, things uh, that I didn't know any better about doing, that now I do know, and I thank him for his grace for keeping me while I was doing those things. <laughs> Ain't that, that, now you Amen. said something now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Look, yeah. now you said something else, Sister Ghost. As Pastor May would say, now that right there, I preach. Yeah. Because, see, we have to understand. See, I don't mind putting myself on front street. See, when I used to have a tote around that pocket Bible, Brother Poe, they, they, they cut my language to, to learn how to communicate. You know, that took a lot. But it changed me in the way that I speak, in the way that I carried myself. No longer was I just trying to, you know, be one of the boys and hang out and do this and just fit in and all that. I was separating myself. But it wasn't me separating myself. It was the Lord separating me. Because I started trying to take on more attributes of Christ. And so it started pulling me out of a lot of things. It start changing the way I communicated, the way I talk, the way I view things. So when we talk about describing a Christian speech, so she goes and read it straight out the word. She read it straight out the word. And that is how we should be. And so we should always speak with what? Grace. It should be seasoned with what? Salt. And we should know how to answer somebody. But it's amazing how you look at folks up in here, holy, 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 and they don't know how to talk to folks. Attitudes and anger and all this stuff. And it's like, man, didn't you just get out of church? A man, ain't you supposed to be saved? So let's look at this. Speak with grace. Somebody read Colossians 4. Five through six. So it's ghost I read and I read some of it. Uh, but Colossians four verses five and six. Somebody read that for me. Walking with them for them that are without redeeming the time. Let your speech be always with grace and season with song. That you may know how you ought to answer every man. Mm. Speak with grace. Another discipline that Paul encourages the believers to practice is what? Monitoring how they live and do what? Speak. Uh-oh. See, we don't want to hear about all that now. You know, God is good. God knows my heart. He good when? All the time. And all the time, God is what? God is good. That's, that's all we want to hear. But we don't want to hear nothing, Deacon McKenzie, when you want to talk to us about how we should live and what? Lastly, how we should speak. Because just like Sister Gosen said to me earlier, that's something we just shouldn't be saying. We might be feeling it, but it's another thing when you speak it. See, it's another thing when you speak it. He writes, he says, live what? Wisely. Among who? Those who are not what? Believers. And make the most of what? Every opportunity. Your action, your attitude, your behavior. He tells us to do what? Live wisely. So let's go. Reverend Connor, that reminds me of what uh, Deacon Ghoston uh, used to say. He said, you might be the only Bible that somebody reads. <laughs> and that goes back to scripture. Because the way you act and the way you talk, that's the only way some people might see God. It's through it's you. It's through you. It's us go from that is. Because none believers more times than not, they ain't even read the Bible anyway. They ain't looking at the Bible. They ain't walking around with the Bible, Siri, 
Can you give me the verse on kindness? <laughs> they ain't walking around with the Bible. But what they is walking around doing, they're walking around looking at you and I. Yeah. And you say you're a member of St. Paul Missionary Baptist Church. I'm on the deacon board. I'm on the usher board. I'm in the choir. I'm an associate pastor. And they looking at you out here, cutting up, acting up, cussing up, and doing everything. You the only Bible they see. And that's what they judge off of. How they see you acting. The way Christians speak and their content, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. And the content of their conversation, oh, it says should suit their positions. Ain't got nothing to do with you being on the usher board now, does it? Ain't got nothing to do with you being digging. But it should suit your position in Christ. What's your position in Christ? I'm saved. I'm a believer. I follow the Lord. That's your position. And so the content of your conversation, it should suit your position in Christ. Now let's go a little further. Any kind of foolish talk, obscenities, or insults should not be a part of a Christian conversation. Man, wait a minute now. Y'all know I like talking about folks, you know. Ain't nothing wrong with talking about folks. I like talking about folks. You know, I just, I just got to tell you how I feel about it. I don't care if I'm in front of one, two, ten, fifteen. I just got to talk about folks. Because I got to tell it like a T.I. is. Any kind of foolish talk, obscenities, or insults should not be a part of the Christian conversation. Ephesians 5 and 4. Because, look at this, the manner in which we express and present ourselves, young people, is always important. Do we have a lot of stuff going on in this world from police misconduct to racial issues and everything? Yes, we do. But when you say that you are a Christian, the manner in which we express and present ourselves is always important. It's always important. Always. The way you present yourself at school is important. Because unfortunately, we have some teachers, they just look at you a certain way because you're black. They look at you a certain way because you're white. A certain way because you mix. They look at the exterior without even knowing the interior. But see this one thing about Christ. Your interior will pour out to your exterior following Christ. But not only that, your interior pour out into your exterior, guess what, if you ain't following Christ. Because what's in you, gonna come out of you. Now you don't believe in that, let's move on a little further then. People judge behavior through what? Eyes, ears, and mind. With this in mind, Paul turns from the emphasis on prayer to focusing on what? Conduct. For wisdom should always influence or mold what our conduct. My wife preaches, she preaches on Proverbs so much. To our kids. So let's go, she preaches about wisdom so much. For wisdom should always influence and mold what? Our conduct. You ever told your kids, I ain't I taught you better than that? (laughs) 
You should know better. I done taught you. I done trained you. I done teach you. The shift to wisdom influenced conduct may appear out of place on the surface. But get this, but it fits neatly within this context. A life devoted to prayer, proper speech, and awareness with a heart of thanksgiving will create what? Godly discipline in our lives. The discernment needed to distinguish between what is appropriate and inappropriate will what? Develop internally. See, it'll, it'll, it'll just develop. Conducting ourselves in a godly manner is beneficial not only for ourselves, but for what? Others as well. So this includes individuals whom we have a closer relationship and those we may, what, influence from a distance. People are watching you with their eyes, with their ears, and with their mind. You being watched. You being judged. Whether you close to them or whether you far away from them. Whether they working right beside you, Deacon McKenzie, on that machine, or whether they're on the other side of the plant. People watching you. So enthusiasm must be accompanied by common sense and tact. Witness without wisdom often produces what? Ill will and negative results. When you witness the folks, if you ain't witnessing with some wisdom and you up there doing some foolish talking, you're going to produce some ill will and some negative results. <laughs> because even though they might say they ain't a believer, they done heard somewhere or another what thus says the Bible. And when you come talking and acting all foolish, but for the first thing, that ain't what the Bible said now. Now, I done heard that before. You, you, you ain't lining up, brother, sister. Inevitably, Christians will face situations and people who would demand explanations for their choices in life. You ever went to witness somebody and they ask you an explanation on why you believe what you believe? Why do you stand on what you stand on? Do you believe that yourself? And see, at times when people ask you that, that's why you better be very, very mindful on how you conduct yourself. Because how would it look? You out here creeping and tipping Saturday night. Then you roll up in that Monday morning, you trying to tell somebody that they shouldn't be cheating with this other person, husband or wife. And you were just out there. Now how you gonna look? And they, all, they know all about your Kool-Aid and they bust you. Paul makes it clear that peace, love, compassion, and other traits should guide each verbal expression that we exhibit. Consider what Jesus says in Mark 7 and 20. Mm-mm. Mm -mm. He says, that which what proceeds out of a man, that is what defiles a man. See, many people fail to realize that speech is merely an expression of the condition of the heart and mind. What's in you, gonna come out of you. See, that is why me and my wife, we stay on our kids so hard. What's in you, gonna come out. If you don't put more Jesus in your diet, guess what's gonna come out? All of that which ain't Jesus. You put more Jesus in, Jesus is going to come out. 
If you put more, I don't even, I don't even try to keep up with the record. They, it's so many little this and little that, little Drew, little Weezy, little Boy and all these names. You, you put more little in, guess what? All the little gonna come out. Young boy and all these, young book and all this stuff. Lil J brought back there laughing, but he listened to him. But if that's what you putting in, guess what's coming out? That's all that's coming out. But now let me ask you this question, young people. At the end of the day, when it's all said and done, is Lil Boy, Young Buck, Young Drew, all these folks, are they going to get you in heaven? No, they ain't. When you in a pinch, can you pray to them to get you out of it? <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> I ain't gonna hear nothing you praying about, Dick McKenzie. You can get on social media, on their Twitter, on their Facebook, or whatever y'all tapping on, and you can send up, uh, uh, I'm going through such and such, can you help me? You ain't gonna get no response. You ain't getting nothing. Not nothing. So at the end of the day, sister goes, why you? <laughs> Yeah, what is it benefiting you? Yeah. Nothing. But I can tell you, Deacon McKenzie, from personal experience, when I pray to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, something happens. Something happens. Now, will it be how I wanted to have many times? No. But is it for the benefit and good of those that love the Lord? Yes. Does it all work out? Yes. Am I less stressed? Yes. Do I have what I need? Yes. At the end of the day, I'm satisfied. Because I get all that I need from my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And the more him that I put in me, guess what? That's what comes out. You see, many people fail to realize that their speech is merely the condition of their heart and their mind. We speak in a manner that symbolizes the state of what? Our feelings, our thoughts, and our overall worldview. Are things bad in our society? with political divisions, police brutality, shootings, wars, and all this stuff going on. Yes, it is. You can't deny it. But our mindset, our speech, should not be of that mindset. Because that way of thinking, Sister Gosa, is a way of thinking with no hope. You don't have no hope. Dee McKenzie, we just look at the newspaper, or look at social media. Let's just be real. You ain't seeing no hope. <laughs> you ain't seeing no hope. It's all doom and gloom. You see no hope. But if you trust and rely on Jesus, knowing that he's in control, that he's going to work it all out, even though it might look bad, seem bad, feel bad, taste bad, he's going to work it all out. But what's most important about that is, is this. He will keep you in perfect peace while all this stuff is happening. Where you won't lose your mind up in him, up in him. He will keep you in perfect peace. Language is merely indicative of our spiritual condition. Are you riding on the inside? Because language is indicative of your spiritual condition. If your spirit is evil, I want these young folks to hear me. If your spirit is evil, then your speech will be what? The same. 
Bitter and sweet can't come out the same faucet. You're going to be one or the other. You ain't squaddling no fence. It ain't no playing both sides. You're going to be one or the other. Language is indicative of your spiritual condition. If your spirit is evil, guess what? Your speech is the same. The Christian who is in God's grace will demonstrate that fact by the nature of what? His or her speech. Ain't no sugarcoating that. Ain't no twisting that up. The Christian who is in God's grace will demonstrate that fact by the nature of his or her speech. And then what Sister Gosen had said earlier and what Dean McKenzie read, Paul uses salt, a preservative that prevents spoilage as a metaphor of what? Grace. Grace is a salt which seasons our discourse, makes it savory, and keeps it from what? Corrupting. Grace. Yes, the Lord knows my heart, but grace is the salt which seasons our discourse, makes it savory, and keeps it from what? Corrupting. It preserves us. And a Christian who is in God's grace. Because guess what, son school class? His grace is what? Sufficient. Will demonstrate the fact. That fact by the nature of our speech. His grace is sufficient. We have to mind our actions, our behaviors, and our attitudes in this Christian walk. You have no option. We have to mind that. We have to be purposely attentive to that each and every day. It is a must because as Sister Gosen stated, the only Bible that people see walking around is you and I. And if they see us cutting up, getting buck, and all this stuff, acting the fool, well, guess what? They have nothing to hope in. Jesus is the way. So as we close this morning, in an age when most have a lot going on in our lives, Sometimes we might find ourselves putting our spiritual disciplines on the back burner. Meaning we just, huh, I don't feel like it today. We push it to the side. Because I got to do such and such. Huh, eh, ain't worry about that today. Well, I'm going to take a day off. Well, like we like to say, Dee McKenzie, you know, I had to put my religion down. I had to put that suitcase down. However, if we are not diligent, we could compromise our Christian walk. So instead, we should pray and then look to those who encourage us in the faith to examine how they manage to live for Christ. And once we become disciplined, we can then help what? New believers learn. You can't help nobody out of the ditch if you're in the ditch with them. I can't pull you out if I'm in there with you. We're going to both stay in the ditch. And unfortunately, that's, that's the Achilles heel of a lot, of a lot of Christians. So many of them don't want to help nobody else out. We are helpers one to another. It doesn't matter if you black, white, it doesn't matter. You are a what? Christian. You being a Christian supersedes 
your ethnicity. <laughs> you a Christian. That supersedes all. And we should be helpers one to another. And once we become disciplined to understand that we all live for Christ as believers, we all under one umbrella, we can then help new believers learn and we can teach them who Christ is, why Christ is important, what Christ means to me, what Christ has done for me. And we can show that and express that because we are the walking Bible. We are, and our lives should be what? Going back to scripture, our lives should be what? A living testimony. Next Sunday, we're gonna talk about Daniel's vision of change. Bible background, Daniel 7, printed text, Daniel 7, verses 9 through 14. Our devotion reading will come from Daniel chapter 6, verses 25 through 28. And our aim for change, we will recognize that God judges the just and the unjust. Trust that he has a future in mind for his people and commit to what? Godly living. May God bless you. May God keep you all. And I pray that this lesson was uplifting to you in your Christian walk. Amen. We'd like to thank Ram Connor for that wonderful lesson. I pray that you take that lesson and apply it to your daily life. I pray that you come out and join us today for our 11 o'clock service. You don't have to stay at home. But if you decide to stay at home, may God continue to bless each and every one of you. Have a wonderful day.